Welcome back. We have a pretty long question with a lot of moving parts, so let's get started. The statement reads, The space between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor is filled with two slabs of linear dielectric material. Each slab has thickness A, so the total distance between the plates is 2A. Slab 1 has a dielectric constant of 2, and slab 2 has a dielectric constant of 1.5. The free charge density on the top of the plate is sigma, and on the bottom plate, negative sigma. There are six parts to this question. Part A. Find the electric displacement D in each slab. B. Find the electric field in each slab. C. Find the polarization in each slab. D. Find the potential difference between the plates. E. Find the location and amount of all bound charge. F. Now that you know all the charge, free and bound, recalculate the field in each slab and confirm your answer to part B. A quick look at the diagram and we see that we have this kind of ice cream sandwich of dielectric material with the positive charge on top and the negative on the bottom, both at thickness A, slab 1, slab 2. So things to know for this problem. There's a lot of parts, so let's review. Gauss's law for the electric displacement and the bound charges. The displacement and the polarization given a permittivity and the electric susceptibility. And of course, what is meant by relative permittivity, also known as the dielectric constant. All right, so for part A, we can use Gauss's law where the Gaussian surface is a pillbox. So the closed surface integral equals the Q free enclosed which just yields d times a, which is equal to sigma times a, and the a's cancel, thus leaving us with d equals sigma. Now we know that this holds for both slabs because on the bottom d would point down, and that would cancel with the negative sigma or the charge free and closed. It's also worth noting that d equals zero inside the metal plate itself. All right, and for part b, we know that since d equals the permittivity epsilon times the electric field, then we can algebraically solve for the electric field, giving us d over epsilon, but we know that the permittivity from our no page is equal to epsilon naught times epsilon r, which is the relative or the dielectric constant, and that's what was given to us. All right, so since d equals sigma, we plugged it in, and then we'll also plug in the dielectric constant, which is different for slab one and slab two. Note that slab two is 1.5, which is equal to three halves, Whenever you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, and that's how we get the answer shown there. For the polarization wanted in part C, it's useful to recall that the dielectric constant is equal to 1 plus the electric susceptibility, and therefore we can algebraically solve for the susceptibility in terms of the dielectric constant and substitute that into the polarization equation, which we see in the line below. Since we know what the dielectric constant is and we just found the electric field, we can find the polarization in slab 1 and in slab 2. With a little substitution and algebraic manipulation, we see that we get some canceling factors and then we end up with our polarizations of sigma over 2 and sigma over 3. Okay, so for part D, let's recall that the potential is the line integral of the electric field. Even though we're only interested in the potential between the plates, I use the reference point of infinity to keep a good habit. We see that it cancels out anyways, which is what we expect since we didn't have any field there. But it's nice to see that we can be conclusive and thorough in our answers. Since the fields are just constants, we can move the E's out and then we're just left with the integral of DL, which just turns out to be a couple of A's minusing one another and we can simplify down to A times E1 plus E2. Very convenient. Plug them in, simplify the algebra, and then we're left with the potential of 7 sigma A over 6 epsilon naught. For part E, for the bound charges, we know that since P is a constant and the volume bound charge is the negative divergence of P, we know that the derivative of a constant will go to zero, therefore the volume bound charge goes to zero, as we see there. Okay, so for the surface bound charge, this is a little different. 
for the bottom of slab one, we see that we have plus P1, and for the top of slab one, we have minus P1. This makes sense given that the top plate was a positive charge and the bottom plate was a negative. Thus, following the direction of the minus and plus signs gives us uh, the direction of P. This is similar for uh, slab two, just with sigma over three instead of sigma over two. We can see this kind of summarized in the next image where we have the plate on top, the plate on bottom with plus or minus sigma, and then the location of the bound charges. We will use this in our next step too. And finally, our last part F. Recall that in the diagram that we just saw, we labeled slab one kind of in the middle of the dielectric material itself. This was done on purpose so that we can ease our calculations in the total charge included in these dielectrics. So for slab one, the charge above is literally everything above it. So that's just plus sigma minus sigma over two, which yields sigma over two. Below is a little more complicated because we have to do the lower bound charge and everything in slab, one, uh, slab two and the bottom plate. But indeed, we do end up with the electric field in slab one that we found earlier. Similarly for slab two, everything above is now complicated because you have to incorporate slab one in the top plate. And then below, we just incorporate the bottom bound charge and the bottom plate. But again, we see that we get plus or minus two sigma over three, and therefore field two is the same as what we found earlier as well. Good to go.